I said back in the 90s, particularly Saturday mornings, yeah, I grew up with Looney Tunes. Yeah, you can easily name off the top of your head if you've ever seen a Space Jam movie, but the likes of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Yosemite Sam, Taz, Wile E. Coyote, all of those guys and gals, they all bring such a smile to my face when you watch their cartoons. Even the song as simple as Roadrunner, just trying to avoid every nefarious trap that the dust to Wiley Coyote creates. It is a simple chuckle and a simple premise. And so, starting up to roadrunner cartridge on the SNES, seeing that gorgeous WB style lay down in front of me, started bringing me back to those lovely heady days of memories of watching What's Up Doc on TV, uh, a UK Saturday morning cartoon magazine show, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, and obviously the attached cartoons. Yeah, it was a simpler time. It's something of childhood that I enjoyed, and I, I do wish we had something similar for kids nowadays. Let me add a little bit more into that, because What's Up Doc, for anyone who isn't aware of it, and I do implore, do have a bit of a search to, on Google and on the likes of the search engine just to see uh, what it was about. It was a Saturday morning magazine show. Um, the whole studio set, and I mean it from a big perspective, I can't underestimate how big, was all themed around Looney Tunes and CITV during the early 90s. So the cartoon caricatures were all there. The set designs were famous set places. And it had some... I suppose... It's why everyone forgets. It had very creative, inverted commas, um, but no way associated with the Looney Tunes characters. Um, people like Wooly, um, Billy the Box, or Billy Box rather, Pasty the Worm, and then the other ones, Mr. Spanky, Naughty Torty, uh, Sam Sam, Bro Bro, The Wolves. <gasps> Frank Sidebottom, late night Frank Sidebottom, the stand-up comic, who was notorious for not so much double entendre, but a very eclectic and strange, eccentric style of comedy. One that obviously eventually, aftermath, long after his death, into one hell of a feature film, came indirectly through What's Up Doc. I know he was on TV before, and he was on TV afterwards, but... Most kids will remember him being this strange paper mache headed character on that show. But I digress, we're, we're staring away from the point. Now, Row Runner the Cartridge, the SNES game, does what it needs to do. It doesn't look exactly like the cartoon, and most games of the era didn't, but it fills the gap. The box does the same job. It looks close enough to the the game and the and the TV cartoon to entice you in to make you want to pick it up and I'm probably gonna say that there are a lot of parents and kids who are probably fooled in the stores and thinking you know it, it could feel the same and there lies the issue you, you see part of the joy of Road Runner Wiley Coyote the format was the humour. To be fair, the game does a, a reasonable job there, starting up each level in a similar format to the cartoon, with the cheeky subtitling above our main characters and the Latin version before the fun begins. Yeah, it's a little pause for effect that it's enjoyable. Each new stage brings a bound of new plan formation by Wiley Coyote to catch Roadrunner. And it's as silly as the cartoon. It's a great payoff at the end, and every level allowing the player to watch Roadrunner outsmart him as the turns are traps against the coyote. Yeah, it's it's a similar structure to the cartoon, it's a similar formula, and it's great to see how it all adapts so well to the game. Yeah, I mean you have to consider this game came out in nineteen ninety two. It's clear to see where the inspiration came from in the years and yeah. Yeah, leading obviously uh, the likes of 
Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, Roadrunner does take a little bit of artistic license from that game while still holding back to its heritage. Running fast is encouraged. It's in the spirit of the character. Sometimes you're going to need to build up momentum to climb walls while Wily Crowe's contraptions are easy to dodge you know, when on the move. But sadly, like I mentioned the later Sonic games, there is too much precise platforming to break up to you know, the fun fast parts that you enjoy. Now, secret flagpoles and point bonuses are scattered out the way places in levels to encourage exploration, and that's where it deviates from the cartoon style of story. And, and that's the point, that's the section. That's where it starts losing its identity. It wants to be two different styles of game. It wants to be Go Fast Sonic, be the cartoon be the Roadrunner cartoon and the traps and the fun and then it wants to be the platform and adventure and it's trying to be both at once and it's master of neither and it's annoying and it never quite clicks the way you want it to be so overall and it's you can go through the levels and there are various changes all over the case and the art style does tweak from level to level which is brilliant but overall Roadrunner is a good game it's just let down by poor level design and nailing the Looney Tunes feel and style was an amazing achievement back then even if even if it could have been a little bit more interesting yeah to maybe I don't know turn the tables and base the game more on Wiley Coyote to the adventuring and the trap design and having an AI roadrunner thwart you at every turn it feels the design document had a, a cascading failure at the start they had the great concept that they knew what they wanted to produce and visually they could see what they wanted to produce but the focus was on the wrong character here and that cascading event and issue propagated itself way through to the game to produce what we have, which is charming and fun, but just a missed opportunity. I mean, overall, this is a straight down the line. It's a three out of five. It's fun, but it's mediocre. It's well worth a look today. and It's still to play, great to play through on a rainy day. But it's a forgettable adventure, and sadly, in the SNES's life, there were too many missed opportunities like this. Ones that really could have made a difference. But we'll talk about some of the better ones in later episodes. For more reviews like this, check out that RetroVideoGamer.com for the latest news, reviews, retro footage, retro reviews, and everything else in between. Until then, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.